Well, hello, everybody. What's going on? We are going to be doing a very special a spoiler review, but it's it's not going to be the traditional spoiler review of Bumblebee. This is going to – it's so funny because you would have mentioned that we were doing this a year ago when this thing was announced. <laughs> I don't think you could have gotten Dennis and I near this studio. Dennis Zen I'd is – I'd have been here. I'd you have been here. Absolutely, yeah, you've yeah. been doing it by yourself. <laughs> John Roca joins us. It is Dennis Zen, myself, Christian Harloff here, and we are doing a, uh, a full breakdown – of Bumblebee, the latest inside of the Transformers franchise, with Travis Knight taking the helm this time, yeah. and Michael Bay stepping down. And all I can say to that is thank the Lord Jesus above, <laughs> because from the second this movie starts, this this new this Bumblebee, I, you know what you're in for because it starts the movie. The whole movie takes place in the 80s, 1987, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and you, what you're going to get here first is to tell everybody who's either listening or watching, you're getting the perspective, at least on this side here, you know, all three, yeah, all three, yeah. um, hardcore fans of like the 1980s mm -hmm. comic, the movie is uh, the TV series, the TV series yeah. all of it. And I even, I even read G.I. Joe versus the Transformers. Yeah, so did I. Like yeah, so, yeah, so right. I mean, yeah. I, I loved it. And I was so excited when the original movie was coming out, uh, the Bay one. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm in the minority because I, I hate that movie, too. And a lot of people, that's the only one that they really like. Um, oh, you don't like the first one either? I don't like the first one. Wow. No, no okay. I think, I think I, because I don't think it was true to what Transformers was. Okay. This movie is. Yes. Bumblebee opens up on Cybertron and... This it, it felt like I, I you should I was leaning up in my yeah. chair, a smile across mm -hmm. my face, um, and you see Cliff Jumper, you see all these all these classic Autobots, and they look like they did, and Prime, yeah. Prime looks yes. like he did, like yeah. he did, and so right away it knocked me off off my seat. I was on board from the first five minutes. Did you feel the same thing? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I have to admit, like. I like ran in. I heard the movie starting. I heard explo mm. explosions, and I like ran in there. I was like, "Oh my god, I miss it!" And I've seen Prime on the screen fi uh, fighting. I'm like, "That's Optimus Prime," and and just like there's Cybertron. This is all the stuff that we've wanted to see for a long time. I thought the first Michael Bay movie, I didn't hate it like you did. I thought it was okay. I, I don't think it was as good as people were, were hyping it up to be, and then the rest were all trash. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Four and a half billion dollars uh, yeah, worth of trash. But yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean the, it. does mean it, a little no, bit. No, 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 I mean, we wouldn't have Bumblebee yeah. without and it, but thank, okay. that's no, true. I'm that not saying that's what I'm it. getting at. Yep. Quality. And, th and thank God, like, um, some of the latest Transformers, because the reason why they kept making them was because they kept making money. It kept like going up and up, international and domestic. And the last one was the first one that didn't. Right. And right. so that's why they opted to go for this different direction. Like they did there, they opted. Um, yeah. yeah. But Roka, you love everything when it comes to Transformers movies. And well, sure. You, because you, you, Not the, the, second the one, one thing yeah. is that you had fun. You had fun with these movies. Yeah. You realize that they're garbage, but of you course. had fun with them. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I, no one's arguing Not the quality much, right. of those films, and I would never argue the quality of those films. Mm -hmm. They're just fun, guilty pleasures, and because I'm a massive Transformers fan, it's just fun for me to see them on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to talk about those first five minutes. I think it's genius by... Not only Travis Knight, but Paramount. They're mm -hmm. like, this is a different universe. This is a different Transformers film. It harkens back to the animated Transformers film that everybody loves from 1986. Oh, yeah. And also it lets you know, like, we are going to go with the G1 designs from the beginning. All of the fighting. You see all the shockwave, soundwave, yep. all of them oh. in there. It was so great. I mean, my friend Michael, who he just sat on the edge of his seat. like, oh, my that, God. And it, everyone has that reaction, yeah. right? Because you're like, and, and what that five minutes does is gives you a window on what could be coming down the road and now you want to go back to Cybertron. Whereas yeah. Michael Bay made it almost like a sexual fetish type thing, Cybertron. Now this is more the classic old school kids, well, it, 80s yes. cy uh, uh, Cybertron, which is great. He made it, and it was just the fact that this war was happening, and that's yeah. what we always knew from being hardcore fans, mm. that this war was happening and the Autobots had to get to Earth. Now, the difference between the cartoon and this is that they first arrived like during the age like the dinosaurs, right, right. and mm -hmm. then they, they kind of come alive a million years later. Or whatever, mm. And... Um, this to me was, I was okay with the little moves and weaves mm -hmm. that they made. And I love what they did with Bumblebee. Yeah. Bumblebee had the classic voice. He was, he sounded like you see him at when he can actually talk. He's a warrior. Yeah. He's a soldier. And then he's the one that prime sends off to, to go to earth. And when he lands and the first couple scenes, like with him arriving and the humans just being, you see Cena and his boys like there and they're, they're, they're just kind of <laughs> playing that game. And then it all 
just breaks loose. And every time the Transformers are on, I will say, I, I'm a fan of John Cena. Mm -hmm. He is atrocious in this movie. <laughs> yeah. He is seems, atrocious. It seems like he's in another film where yeah. he's been directed to be cheesy, but everyone else is playing yeah. the what is the world of the film. Right. He's in a Michael Bay movie. Yeah. yeah. It seems like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little yeah, yeah, bit yeah. overstating everything. And I don't know if that's a Travis Knight thing or a John Cena thing, but like he he's the only part, the only actor in the whole film that seems a bit out of pace with everyone else. Because everyone else is taking it seriously and living in the world. And yes, there are certain moments of jokes they're making, but it's all within the world of the film. Cena seems like he's completely out of step being this overblown one note, uh, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. thing. And he, but he does have the line of the but movie. He does have Later one good on. line yeah. where yeah. he just says, they literally call themselves the Decepticons. <laughs> <laughs> which I love, which I yeah. love because I, I when, when, when they announce themselves, so we're, I'm so-and-so from the Decepticons. I'm like, would you really want to tell people that right. that's yeah. what you're called and that you want them to trust you? And then, and then when that line, but I think it's, look, it's John Cena, but then it's also, I would say just even that storyline of the military mm -hmm. and the government, because then yeah. you have that Dr. Powell. Yeah, uh, John Ortiz. Know, yeah, yeah. who's a great actor. Yeah, good actor. But Carlito's like, way. I always yeah. remember from Carlito's oh, yeah. way. Yeah. But, but, but that, that character was cheesy, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, but, in the general. I, I, that whole storyline, yeah. I don't think they – they just use that to delay the the inevitability of those two trans, uh, Decepticons coming to find Bubble. But, I couldn't agree with you more, though, there, too, because yeah. I, I, that storyline to me – let's call it what it is. The, st the, the thing that makes this movie – the heart of this movie is Haley Steinfeld yeah. and yes. Bumblebee. Oh, yeah. They Absolutely. play it off the Iron Giant E.T. angle. Yeah. They deliver on it. And, mm -hmm. and we were talking to our buddy, our mutual yeah. friend, Michael Vogel, yeah. had said, it last night he said they really beat you over the head with the iron giant but i was cool with it yeah, yeah. um i just she is mesmerizing in this role mm -hmm. she is you're, you're endeared to her you understand her i thought that her arc it's emotional i think mm -hmm. she did in one movie what they couldn't do with shia labeouf in the mm -hmm. two or three where he, i agree he was with in. that yeah. yeah she's touching and what she's going through and her tragedy what she's negotiating it's real, and you can see it in her face. She doesn't overplay it. It isn't overdone. And it's incredible what happens when you cast an actress who can do complexity and levels, which we never saw in any of the Michael Bay films. It's amazing what you can do, with, like as a main actress, what you can do with that. And Haley certainly carries the film. And you're right, way better than LaBeouf did in any yeah. of his installments. Uh, but and that's will, not taken oh, away from him as no, an actor. Because no, no, no. he's a it's, good actor. In those that's movies, all direction it's and whatever. Totally. Yeah. I actually and, don't I, mind LaBeouf in, in, in the original but Transformers. But I would say one thing about the Army storyline. I think that's on purpose because it evokes the 80s TV show, which also had yeah. that cheesy stuff going yeah. on. It's the, yeah. the whole point of it was to make you feel like you were watching an elongated episode of the 80s TV series as a feature film. I and agree I with brilliant. that, and I'll tell you, I do agree with that because the stuff that she go, that Haley Steinfeld goes through with like she's a championship diver. I mean, yeah. the thing at the end when she dives in the water is ridiculous. <laughs> but, it, but, it still, is. but I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> because there were a couple. There were two reasons she I was okay with it. it. Yeah, yeah, she earns it. There was yeah. two two reasons I was really okay with it. For exactly what Roker just said. They play a lot of it. There, there's one angle that seems like it's straight out of Can't Buy Me Love. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and you got these girls are the stereotypical right. 80s, yeah. like yeah. not real <laughs> like 80s right. characters. And they're playing it like that. So yeah. I, I, and, and it's consistent throughout the whole movie that they do that. Um, and the other reason is because every time – because there are some bad jokes in this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. making any excuse for it. Bad jokes. But every time the bad joke made me go, ah, I went – that's yeah, better than anything Michael Bay. <laughs> and, 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 and I went, I'm, I'm cool with it. And I, and, I, and I moved on because I was so wrapped up. Yeah. This movie, it's, it's like a, like a stand-up comedian set. Mm -hmm. If you're there for that stand-up comedian and for the first five minutes, they're just slaying. And, and you're there for an hour set. And they're just slaying in those five, six minutes. And you're crying laughing. You're going to be on board. Even mm -hmm. if the set is a little shitty in around like the mm -hmm. 10, 15 minute area, you're going to move around and go, yeah, okay, th mm -hmm. that's fine. Get me back. Start me. Oh, I'm laughing again mm -hmm. because that's how I felt with this movie. Even mm -hmm. though there were some times I went, ooh, and there was a lot of time with Cena and the doctor. I'm like, mm. yeah. but then Haley comes yeah. back on with Bumblebee yeah. and what they did with Bumblebee, how he lost his voice, it, it worked. So I, I, I really think I love this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't think the part with the military and mm -hmm. stuff, it's not – that significant or a part of the yeah. movie, it's, it it weaves itself in and out of the movie, but it's not so much. And you get that that full focus. I mean, you know, I watched it with my girlfriend. She didn't really, you know, she didn't grow up with Transformers. Right. She didn't really care about like big action set pieces. But she got involved once Haley Steinfeld came into the picture. And you see, you talk about her background with her her father passing away suddenly, mm -hmm. not having to say goodbye, and just having that emotional loss that she can't. You know, deal with and, and tying that in with with how Bumblebee is and fixing the car mm -hmm. and just like all these like things that build characters that we never got in the the other movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that that's 
it, every time we talk about the Haley uh, Seinfeld and, and um, Bumblebee storyline, you could have really relied that it could have been the whole movie. Oh yeah, yeah. it could have been because even, even the side relationship that she has with the with the kid, yeah, Mimo, yeah, Mimo or Memo or Mimo, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's fine. He's, yeah. It's like he's it's he's, like I understand why he's there, and mm-hmm. like a lot of his jokes missed. There yeah. were sometimes where you, like you could see they're playing. Well, oh, this is gonna get a big laugh in the theater, and just goes, yeah, and. He was he's likable enough, but I just didn't know if I just didn't think you need him. Well, I think that's what was smart though in this way that they it was a new way to have a female lead in a movie that doesn't necessarily follow the conventional path of a romantic storyline with the other male. Yeah. She's she controls that entire Easily, relationship yeah. from beginning to she ignores him twice, then they meet when he stumbles into the situation of seeing Bumblebee, and then they have a kiss, but it's only on the cheek, yeah. and she makes a point of saying it's only on the cheek. She tries and to hold then, her hand. And he tries yeah, to hold yeah, her hand, yeah, and he's, she's like, We're not there yet. Yeah. So she controls the whole thing. And I think that's a powerful message to send through right. a female protagonist to a film like this. I think it's smart. We'll see this more and more as it goes forward. And I liked it. But yes, some of his jokes fell short. But I thought the kid did a nice he job was, with it. He was it. fine. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't like I was just like. She needed to connect with somebody besides Moon Yeah. You yeah. know what I liked about Haley Steinfeld over, let's say, the last Transformers movie? And it's, it's <laughs> nothing to do with like. <laughs> The actress, Isabel Moner, yeah. uh, is that they tried to make her like, oh, I'm the tough girl and I'm going to, this little girl is going to fight this giant right, robot, right? right? Yeah, ridiculous. That was not what Haley Steinfeld was doing. Mm-hmm. Her no. character was not like, I'm going to grab two gu- guns and then go in mm-hmm. there, which is fine if you build that character like a, a Sarah Connor from Terminator 2. But like, her character was not going to do that. And yeah. they didn't try and make her that. No, they gave, no. and I like the relationship that she had with her, with her mother. Yeah. And I loved, I got to tell you, the relationship I really liked a lot was the relationship with her and her stepfather. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, Ron. Yeah. because the thing was, they could have gone, what I thought they were going to do, and I guarantee you, and again, I, I'm going to t- take as many shots as Michael Bay as I can. <laughs> if, it was Michael, if it was Michael Bay, he's going to do the t- stereotypical, the the, fa- the the father-in-law's, or the, excuse me, the, uh, the stepfather. stepfather is a yeah. douche, and he does something that, that's going to let Bumblebee pee on him or something, yeah, yeah. or he's going to do something <laughs> absolutely so stupid, and then there's, and then Haley Steinfeld's going to be wearing a half top, and like that mm-hmm. would have been the Michael Bay version. In this, with Ron, Ron is a good guy, yeah, and he does Means that. Well. Th- oh, and the driving thing at the end, yeah. she's just and she gives him props. She's like, "That's a hell of a driver, Ron." And he's like, "Yeah." And the brother, the brother was uh, the kid going was great. Going off what you said before, yeah. this is significant of the '80s feel. Yeah. Yeah. How many times, whether it's just one of the guys or that movie, just one of the guys or the the, the classic little brother mm-hmm. that at first not not on the same page mm-hmm. but then by the end of it they're uh, they're seeing eye to eye yeah. and, they're, and he's part of the mission I, I, that stuff really worked for me and in another universe Ron is uh, uh, homie's brother from Die Hard the guy that gets killed yeah, he's Ron he, Silver's he, brother too yeah you're saying like Ellis. Ron Silver yeah, as well. talking yeah. about Ellis. he's got that whole vibe with his beard and I like it because he's presented it's got the smile thing that kind of yeah. works in 2018 you know how uh, the Captain Marvel thing she doesn't smile right. and if he'll mm-hmm. smile enough they, it's a nice subtle joke in 87 where it's set and then, then later on you, you're kind of against Ron a little bit and then later on Ron does this crazy move with this yeah. crazy action sequence and he says I saw it in Miami Vice which is perfectly topical and so now you're on Ron's side so when they, they all come back together at the end it's believable yeah. overall that they would find some kind of common ground together there were times when they threw 80s things that references in there that, to let us go this is the 80s <laughs> oh there's a ton there's a ton, yeah. there's a ton. There's there's a ton. Of, there's of music you know Breakfast Club Mr. T cereal was great yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a nice subtle one yeah and then you know you know, the 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 mixtape or not the tapes the ta- cassette tapes yeah. that he spit out the that Walkman. bit was great yeah. that yeah, bit yeah. where where he's, he's I forget what the band, first band was uh, that, Smiths yeah, yeah and he spits it across the, yeah. the way um, th- their dynamic just popped and I yeah. think that by having him lose his memory and not being able to know how to fight because those the two new Decepticons do we know who they're voiced by yeah uh, Angela Bassett and oh. Justin Thoreau yeah interesting yeah. I, see I didn't know and they were great they were good yeah. and I and, and that's and could go back by the way when Justin Thoreau's character is popping humans like bugs oh, yeah. and kill like that was the first guy <laughs> yeah. he kills brutal yeah, yeah. it's like they, and it wasn't goofy no. it's like it it was still it was like I was sitting who was that? I don't remember who I was sitting next to but oh Fernandez yeah. and he's like oh, oh wow yeah, yeah. like they, yeah. they they go for moments and that also harkens back to what Travis Knight did for um, Kubo and the Two Strings mm-hmm. He, he made an animated film, but there's some dark stuff in that movie. That movie can get scary. Yeah. This isn't necessarily to that level, um, but you, it's it did it just it took itself seriously, had fun when it needed mm-hmm. to. This to me was the definition of aiming for fun and achieving it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, remember he 
he slices yeah. Cliff Jumper in half. In yes. half. In half. Right. That reminded me of the old. Didn't it, remind you of the movie? Oh, yeah. 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 When yeah. Iron High got blasted yeah. in the yeah. face yeah. Uh, yeah. by Megatron. Yep. And just to make the drive the point home, you're seeing it from behind. You're not seeing fr- in the front where it would be like easier to accept. Right. You're seeing from a, from a helpless position of watching this happen in front of you and you being unable to do anything about it. it it's just, like you said, the, the violence is at the right amount of violence, and it, but the pop is just all like a water bubble yeah. instead yeah. of blood and skin. Yeah. It's smart. You know Michael Bay would have done something completely Ridiculous. different. And that. the water, the reason the water works is because from what they do inside of their weaponry, right. where most of our bodies made of water. Yeah. So like that, that I, I was like, I'm cool with that. But Optimus Prime. Yeah. Him yeah. coming back. <laughs> and Pri- Prime looking like Prime, ha- having the message through it. That's the way that Haley Steinfeld was able to hear it because mm. she because Bobo Bay lost his memory, didn't know what it was. Those remind me of the R2D2 having the message inside mm-hmm. of him. Oh, but yeah. the question I have for you guys, the spoiler to the very end, obviously, is mm. Well, after he turned into the Camaro, and we unfortunately linked back to the Michael Bay franchise, yeah. um, he's he's on the road with a truck that looks yeah. very much like Opera. Prime. Yeah. yeah, but we don't know if that's him, though, right? We don't, because in the post credits, he meets up with Prime in the Force. I, yeah, oh, either, wait, so that, that's that? that connects. Yeah, that's in oh. the right after they go directed by Travis oh, I saw Knight. That. I saw they have that. Yes, post-credits. Yeah, he's on right, Earth, right, right. so, so it might yeah. have been him. we're so assuming that it is him. Right, right, right. But it also could be just a random car, and maybe Bumblebee scans him and gives that information to Optimus. And then the asteroids come down, and we know we're starting all over again. And I will tell you that what I hope happens. I'm glad you enjoy the other movies. I really am. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I, I think that, though, they should just do what they did with Halloween. Get them the, the hell out of here. <laughs> I don't and, disagree. Yeah, and they could they can continue the sequel inside of the 80s if mm-hmm. they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't have – because nobody's going to say, well, wait a minute. This doesn't follow up with canon with that Stanley Tucci moment yeah, or John yeah, yeah. Leguizamo. Or not John Leguizamo. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Totoro. Yeah, yeah Totoro. Yeah. You know, just get rid of it all. Just make this the new galaxy. And the other thing that I just – this franchise needed a new mm-hmm. voice, and yeah. Travis Knight was that voice. Michael Bay was just around way too long. To any any franchise, a director sticking around for that many. I mean, David Yates is maybe an ex- exception, but even him, if you look yeah, at yeah, the look last two, Fantastic Beasts, maybe like he's, he's overstated. Look, look at Peter point. Jackson with yeah. the, the Lord of the Rings right. franchise. Way easy oh, now. You can overstate. Yeah. Your, you're welcome for if you stick around for way too long on franchises, and I think that this proves that other directors need to take helm. I would like to see Travis Knight do a second mm-hmm. movie. I think yeah. he gets it. I can tell he's a fan. I love that they brought it back to stand Bush, you got the touch. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was great. That, that the soundtrack worked. itself was fantastic. It was yeah. Really good. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this is, and what I'd like to see though, and what I liked what they didn't do because this is Travis Knight thinking this. This is he didn't blow his load on one shot here. What he did was. Megatron, he, he not yeah. even a mention. Yeah. yeah, not even a mention of Megatron. Or Starscream, either one of them. Right, yeah. very smart. Bring them back and give me Frank Welker. Yeah, and no disrespect to Hugo Weaving, mm-hmm. give me Frank Welker, and then Starscream. I think fr- fr- Frank was it mm-hmm. Welker did mm-hmm. Starscream also. Mm-hmm. Let him do both and bring them back and let that be. In the 80s, so this is 87 when the movie takes place. Let's make it 88. Yeah, yeah. and the Autobots are, are kind of just yeah. doing their thing. And now here come the, the Decepticons that we know, sound, uh, Soundwave. Mm-hmm. They're, they're all there. Jazz. And, oh, yeah. all of them. All yeah. of them. Yeah. And then I just I want Prime to be a heavy focus right. on whatever the next movie is. I don't know if they want to do like a Bumblebee two, or if they want to do something called Optimus Prime, or if it's Transformers colon. Whatever, you know, mm-hmm. 1988 or whatever they mm-hmm. want to call it and focus on Prime because this is the Prime. Not just, okay, obviously we love the designs. Maybe the newer, younger generation, maybe they disagree and they like the Michael Bay. I actually don't mind the Michael Bay uh, Optimus Prime design. It's not the one I grew up with. The only thing I mind is the, the stupid mouth. Yeah. Like when he starts yeah. talking, it's fine. But at the core, his character is more like what we know right. from anime. Mm-hmm. He isn't this blood lust uh, character that wants to kill like what was in the it was in the last movie or the second uh, two movies ago where he's like I'm gonna kill all the humans Op- we know Optimus Prime would never say anything like right, that he's, right. he's supposed to be he's supposed to be like the epitome of leadership and like of a hero as sacrifice he's not gonna be like alright well these humans suck so I'm just gonna squash well, them he, yeah. just didn't, he just didn't he just didn't know where to go with the franchise anymore and the difference is this is why when you have a good filmmaker yeah. And a filmmaker who is a fan. Mm-hmm. Michael Bay is a fantastic filmmaker when it comes to spectacle. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about that. He knows how to put on a yep. spectacle. 
but he's not a fan of the Transformers. He, he just, yeah. you know, of the lore. Yeah. And, Travis you know, Knight is a fan of the lore. He, he, and it's also, you can't be discounted that Robert, that uh, Orsi and Kurtzman also moved farther and farther away from the franchise right. as this thing went along. And when those two people were, like, there to kind of corral Bay a little bit, you had a decent first film that people loved. Mm-hmm. But as they had less uh, influence on the overall franchise, then you saw Michael Bay taking full control of it and you saw the results. Look. Right. Spectacle. It's great spectacle. Is it a good story? No. Uh, is he acting good all the time? No. Okay, I get it. It's a guilty pleasure. My question to you, though, is, as you look at this, and I agree with you, I think you start here, you keep going. I would Transformers 1988 sounds like a fantastic fucking title. Yeah. Or Bumblebee 19, right. whatever you want to call it. Sounds like it's a great title. But my concern here is this. If the second one comes out the gate and doesn't make the money, then how many more do you get? Because with, with Bay, he was able to survive on these things making, making money. money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If these come out, then was the new direction worth it if you only get one or two? Well, yeah, that's the thing. Is I'm concerned that's that maybe concern. this it's movie isn't going to do that well. Right. I hope their expectations aren't too big. Like, oh, this needs to equal whatever whatever the highest well, it's Transformers. It's or the opposite of the though, Rotten right? Tomatoes. Remember, so. what's it at? It's at 95% Great. or something like that. Or the opposite of that is because people were so tainted by that last movie. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah exactly. And, and it smashed yeah. box. That's the fear. It's, that's the big fear mm-hmm. is because that was my fear. When yeah. they announced it, I said, why are we doing that? Why do we care about Bumblebee? Yeah. And now it's like, this is the thing I was most depressed of last night. When I, I can't... I can't even tell you how many times I said to myself, I wish this was the first movie I've ever seen uh, in the new, mm-hmm. of this Transformer. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if this would have been the first one, the, um, the sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. If this is the first time anyone had ever... Because the other thing, and this is the credit will go to Michael Bay here for starting this, because that I've never had a problem with the way the Transformers actually transform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And they took this tri- technology over to this movie. Mm-hmm. Flawless in this film. Yeah, like when he, I felt like Bumblebee was there. I yeah. mean, the the, the the special effects in this movie are are second. Not only not. that, the action compared to the the previous movies was much easier to follow. To follow, yes. it yes. wasn't like yeah. shaking all around. It wasn't quick cutting. It was like, yeah. hey, I can tell. And also the the character designs where I could tell who was who, right. who was fighting mm-hmm. who, instead of like, I remember in the in the first few Transformers and even later on, it's like a lot of the, especially the Decepticons, they all look the same. And I yeah. just couldn't tell who was, who, this guy's fighting who? And mm-hmm. is this guy a good guy or a bad guy? This yeah. one's like, okay, I know that's Bumblebee. You, I right, know. Right, right. You it's have 35 true. Transformers on screen all the time fighting each other. It's it was, hard, it's to, hard follow. to follow. Yeah. I, and there's and, nothing wrong with it. And the, I, say I, that. I, can't, I can't say this is my last shot, but I have one more shot. <laughs> <laughs> Tra- Travis Knight to me proved what I've always been saying, and that's Michael Bay isn't funny. Mm-hmm. Um, Travis Knight, even though a lot of these jokes mm-hmm. miss, he got it. He got the mm-hmm. Tony, and and like he knew when to infuse the humor mm-hmm. and when it was appropriate to infuse it, and when to like it. You hit your emotional moment. Try for a joke there. Okay, you missed. Now try there, um, and it would it, it just interweaved him, and you could tell when he was trying. His sense of humor was was good. Mm-hmm. It was a good sense of humor, even if the jokes didn't hit. As opposed to Merlin telling jokes yeah, yeah. In, in, back in time. Oh, okay. Oh, sh- I, you, do you remember? I like try to block that on my memory <laughs> that that actually happened. That actually in, happened. The, in the last one. Merlin yeah, was yes. telling jokes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, like, Merlin told jokes in Shrek and, three. Too, and like so, Merlin, right. okay, Shrek so, okay. three, not a Transformers <laughs> moment. Um, Shrek the third or whatever it's called. But nonetheless, yeah. we're we are doing good here. Yeah. We are. Start, I I encourage people to go see this movie. Oh, yeah. I really hope they see it because of exactly what Roka said. If it doesn't do very well and people are still tainted from the past ones. Uh, will they say, well, maybe we go back to Bay because, you know, yeah. this uh, would not, yeah, I He know. did produce the film and he so did, did produce, Spielberg. So yeah, they, 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 they produced well, yeah. I don't know. I can't say how much they had to do with it, but yeah. certainly they, they, he'll they, have, he'll have his they name made on every Transformers even 20 years after he's dead. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. But they, they, yeah. they did make a tie back to his if they wanted to. So I think yeah. that was the out that they gave themselves and they chose to. With they the did tie it back. And I think they did on purpose because if this one doesn't make film, then you're right, Christian. They opened that door to work back to Bay. And that's scary for a lot of people The good thing is there's a good Whatever 10, 15 years between right. this right. movie, yes. so you can still and, do a bunch. Right. Yeah. What I'm worried about too is Michael Bay seeing the cr- the love that this yeah. thing's getting, and he's gonna go. Well, I'm, I'm coming, back. coming <laughs> back. <laughs> back. Right. It's like just we're Transformers. Just that. Yeah, just that. Stay oh, away, but, man. Yeah. but I will say this, man. That Cybertron shit, like that the first best. five minutes, bro. It, like if they are able to do a whole yes. film, long sequence Show me that. on Cybertron, we are now excited yeah. as yeah. as old school fans of the original Transformers. Bring me back. Bring me Hot Rod. Show me Hot Rod. Yep. Mag, uh, all that. Ultra 
Magnus. Show, yes. Give me them all. Oh, oh, hopefully, hopefully, Shockwave doesn't get the 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 short end of the stick. Because in the remember in the cartoon series, Shockwave had to sit on Cybertron the whole time. Yeah, oh, right. He would just talk to them. <laughs> he never got a fight. He, just, yeah. he would always talk to. Uh, yeah. It was uh, weird because then you know we we're getting super geeky here, but like yeah. I remember in the comic books, Shockwave was the guy who actually tried to supplant Megatron. Yeah. Uh, but then in the cartoon series, he was like his loyal servant. Yeah, right? it was Starscream we did in the cartoon series. Yeah, yeah. because going off what Roka said, I think that they could do it if they if they embraced it. Just show mm-hmm. how m- people really are respond. Everybody responded to those first five ten minutes last yep. night. Everybody right. did. And if they did, and this is the thing I said. This is one of my biggest problems with the first movie that I had said that people had asked me because a lot of people did like that movie, mm-hmm. and people said why didn't like it? I said because they relied too much on the human story. Mm-hmm. They didn't rely on the on the Autobots and the Decepticons. They didn't trust in them. They clearly could. I don't want to hear about money wise because it's too expensive to keep them on. It was a two hour and 20 minute movie. They did enough of the stuff to follow them. And Travis Knight did that last mm-hmm. night. We're showing a lot of that stuff. Really followed Bumblebee. Uh, the emotion made me feel like he was a real being. Yeah. And then when they did the stuff with the Autobots, Show me that stuff. Show you. You can you can phase out a lot of the humans if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. You can yeah. do something a full on movie. Look at what they do with Lion King. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Show me a full on movie with the Transformers, and if we can eventually get to that exact story from the 1986 version, why not? Yeah. 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 I think that's that's the big concern is people don't want or don't think that a non human version can work. Right. And it's like. It worked in the cartoon. It worked yeah. in the animated film. It's just, I think, people just trusting that, that they can be done. And it was a smart combo because you had the two villains. They had more of a modern Transformers look to them mm-hmm. from the Bay type side yeah. combined with the G1 stuff that you saw with right. Optimus and with Bumblebee. So the combination of both of them can still work as you go forward in this in this franchise if you if you maintain this vibe. It can because in the comics, Spike was there a lot. Yes. Right? Spike yep. was there a lot. And and what Haley Steinfeld, I thought, think, did, it was a smart move to make the human story as relevant it was in this because mm. you, you're trying to get everybody back on board but they didn't stay away from making the Autobots like real, or Bumblebee really the focus mm-hmm. and showing how almost human like he could be and now that we've embraced him and now that the hopefully the audience embraces him then you can rely more on the Autobots and the Decepticons having and, and mm-hmm. developing those characters because Justin Thoreau and Angela Bassett, their characters, what we knew about them is that they were just kind of soldiers sent <laughs> yeah. from, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were Decepticons. Yeah. We didn't know anything else about, yeah. about them except those are the bad guys. Right. Okay, fine. Um, and I thought the torture scene with Bumblebee was really good <laughs> and that he wasn't fighting back and he said, why isn't he fighting back? Mm. Awesome. And mm. the, the Justin Thoreau voice, was, even it's though he's a new character, sounded like the old Decepticons I didn't yeah. know oh it was, it, their relationship was good yeah she's like can I kill them yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, take and, it easy and shout out to Angela Bassett because A this is the first female le- female yeah. voiced uh, villain Decepticon in these mm. films and she is an African American one that, right. that doesn't happen to all that so, so not in Michael May movies in Michael Bay, exactly <laughs> so all of that she was fan- I mean I interviewed her for some other thing uh, talking about this and she said that it, she took it very seriously she does with every project but this especially because she wanted to show what they could do with this so I, I, I thought she was great and she had the right levels like when she gets upset all of it just worked all around emotion and that's why you cast an actress like that because right. you want them to play levels of complexity with the limited amount of screen time they get well that is our spoiler review of Bumblebee and as you can tell these are three if this is the first time <laughs> any, uh, the three of us are on the same page that we actually enjoyed uh, it all together yeah. um, and it's a nice thing because yeah. we're all because as much as I bust Roka's balls he's a hardcore Transformers fan mm. and and he loves the other movies, so God bless him. But like this, I think, is something that the fans really wanted for a long time. Mm. And I think, like you said with your girlfriend, mm. this also introduces enough of a storyline here with Haley Steinfeld mm. and Bumblebee to get people who are not fans. They might enjoy watching the beginning, not know why yeah, yeah. They, we love it. Yeah, yeah. Why I'm like a <laughs> six-year-old kid looking back up in the screen. But it's all there, guys. I really want to see what you guys thought of it. What were your favorite moments of Bumblebee? Hopefully you saw it. Otherwise, why the hell are you watching this? And if you wanted to kind of <laughs> tune in and you're like, well, I want to hear more about it, hopefully we swayed you to go check it out. Thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe. If you're listening to this on the Movie Talk podcast feed, well, thank you. Check out our other podcasts that we have. There's tons of them. We have sports. We have video games. We have a wrestling site. We have so much for you guys to check out. Check out Collider Live, Movie Talk, the whole damn thing. Keep on looking. Just do a Google search. Check out Collider. (laughs) We'll be here.